Hi, and welcome to another Complete 3D Concepts video tutorial. My name is Josh, and in this tutorial, we will be taking a look at how to work with point clouds in Autodesk Inventor. Due to the workflow required to do this, I will be breaking this up into two parts. In this, the first part, we will take a look at how to set up your project assembly, getting your point cloud into Inventor and ready to begin work, as well as manipulation of the point cloud in Inventor for easier viewing and working. In the second part, we will look at working with the point cloud and modeling in and around it, as well as extracting as-built information from the point cloud within Inventor. Today I will be using Autodesk Inventor 2018 Professional, but to the best of my knowledge, this should be the same workflow for any version of Inventor from 2015 on. To follow this workflow, you will need to either the standard or the professional versions of Inventor though, as far as I know, this won't work with Inventor Lite. To work with point clouds in Inventor, you will also need Autodesk Recap installed and an Autodesk Recap file. Either an RCP file or an RCS file will do the job. There are some differences in these files, but we won't get into that right now. Just know that both will basically do the same job for you. If you have a different file format for your point cloud, you should be able to import that into Recap and make yourself an RCP file. I've spoken in depth about how to do this in the Recap tutorials and you can check that out over there. Recap itself is a free to download and use program and the free version is fine in almost all situations. The paid version does have some benefits over the free one if you are doing this a lot, but there are ways around that that I will get into a bit later. Because Autodesk like to change their website so frequently, I won't bother including a link here. You can just Google Recap Download. It's a neat program and I've covered it in depth in other tutorials that you can find on our YouTube channel by following this conveniently placed link. At some point in the past, Autodesk was importing the point cloud directly into Inventor. I think that was from 2014 back, but I'm not 100% certain. They've now changed to using recap files exclusively, and if you are using an older version of Inventor and need some help, please feel free to get in touch and I will see if I can do anything to help you out. Either that or contact your Autodesk reseller and see what they can do to help you. But for now, less talking, more catting. In a previous tutorial, we covered how to insert a point cloud and settings you need to focus on during that process. You can find that tutorial here or in the description below. We will start this tutorial with where you should insert your point cloud. As you can see here, you have the option to insert a point cloud in both the part and assembly files. There are pros and cons to both, which is what we will take a quick look at now. By inserting the point cloud directly into the assembly file, it means you have easy direct access to the point cloud tools and cropping the point cloud, which is something that you will do a lot of, which might make it seem like an obvious choice. However, the drawback is that it makes your computer work the hardest to display everything, meaning that this can cause significant frequent interruptions in your workflow depending on your computer's specifications. This is especially notable when working with a large amount of or very complex geometry in an assembly. The better option in all cases I have seen to date is to insert the point cloud in a part file and then mate that part file to the origin of the main assembly using three flush constraints. This allows you to either hide the point cloud by turning off the visibility of the part when you don't really need it, or if your computer is really struggling, then you can suppress the part file, freeing up the resources to work faster and smoother. The other huge advantage to having your point cloud in a part file though, is that if you are using a top-down modeling method and you have a common origin point with your point cloud and some or all of your sub-assemblies, you can drop the point cloud part into those smaller sub-assemblies work there smoother, easier and faster, and then delete the point cloud part when done. Just remember to delete that point cloud part though, because the more iterations you have of it in the higher assemblies, the harder those higher assemblies have to work to display that information. To this end, in this tutorial, we'll be working with the point cloud in a part file. However, all functions for manipulating the point cloud are the same whether the point cloud is inserted in the assembly directly or in the part and ultimately the choice is yours. I would suggest trying both workflows and seeing which one works best for you. 
Before we go any further, you will want to align the view cube with your point cloud. You should do this in both the point cloud part and the main assembly. In most cases, you will want to align the view cube with the wall or a grid line of a structure. So you need to rotate the point cloud until you have it aligned the way you want. Then right click on your view cube and select the set current view as and select front. Alternately, you can cheat a little here by creating a point cloud plane and doing a look at that plane and then aligning your view cube and deleting the cl pl cloud plane again. Creating planes this way can be a little risky though due to the way that the software works out the orientation of the plane and the points used to create that plane, meaning you can end up with a plane that isn't aligned correctly to the surface that you want. You should take care to ensure that you have the right alignment. You can refine or change this later if it didn't work exactly as the way you would like. So for now, we'll just do this step manually, and if we need to, we'll change it later. Now that we have the point cloud in a model, the next thing you are going to want to know is how to isolate things in your point cloud so you can view things a little easier. If you open your point cloud part and go to the Manage tab, you will see a point cloud panel that gives you a few options. The main one you will be interested in is the box crop function. This is where having your point cloud aligned to your view cube in, is handy and saves a lot of time and effort. The box crop function does exactly as advertised and crops or hides a portion of the point cloud inside or outside the box that you draw. You can adjust the box size using the arrow grips on each side. You can change which portion of the point cloud is kept or hidden from this drop down and the portion of the point cloud which will be hidden turns blue accordingly. And then click on the green check mark to OK the changes. Using a combination of these functions you can isolate anything you like in the point cloud. It doesn't delete the points so you can get them back when you need them. The drawback with doing this though is that you can't save these crop states to come back to later easily. You can't undo just one crop. If you go back to your box crop command and select undo crop, it will undo all crops and you will have to start again. The only way to undo a crop is if it was the last command you used, you can press Ctrl Z and it will undo. This may change in time as AutoCAD has more and better tools for handling this, but there is nothing on the horizon at this stage as far as I know for this functionality in Inventor, so just be careful when doing this. If this process of cropping and uncropping is proving problematic for your job, and you would like to be able to save a few different crop views, there is a way to handle this process if you have Recap Pro by using Regions. I covered this in depth in Recap, recap tutorials, so I won't go over it again here, but if you have a RCP file attached, you will see this navigator button is lit up. This allows you to use some of the functions that transfer from Recap, like Regions and Scan Locations. If you have created a region in an RCP file and saved that, you will see that region here in the Point Cloud Navigator. You can turn regions on and off like layers and hide the bits of the Point Cloud that you don't want or need to see while you're working, and this will help you model things a little bit faster. It also frees up some resources in Inventor and you can work a little bit quicker, rotate things faster. If you have processed a point cloud as discussed at the end of our last recap tutorial and have imported your own RCS point cloud files, you will see those down here in the scan locations where you can turn them on and off. You will also note that the inventor handles this point cloud much better as there is far less data for it to handle. While this is useful on big projects, it is not necessary on any project. Like all other commands in Inventor, you do get used to cropping your point cloud very quickly and it becomes second nature after a little while. 
It's really only in extreme cases where we are working on huge data sets that we break up our point clouds for use in Inventor. This is something that we can advise you on at the start of a project if you're using us to supply your point cloud data. If you only have an RCS file attached, the navigator button will be greyed out. That's because the RCP file holds the information of the regions and the scan locations. You can create an RCP file using your RCS files though with very little trouble and you can check out how to do that in our other tutorials. The only other thing worth noting here is that Inventor and Recap don't like having the same point cloud RCP or RCS file open at the same time. So if you need to work on your point cloud in Recap, you'll have to close all iterations of it in Inventor, then open it again once the changes have been made in Recap and Recap is closed again. This may be related to the size of the files that we work with typically, but at the very least make sure everything is saved before you try and open the same RCP file in Recap as you have referenced in Inventor because it can cause both programs to crash. Inventor will save your point cloud in its current crop state. So this may be handy to take advantage of if your computer is struggling to open a part or an assembly that is showing a whole point cloud. However, crop point clouds don't work with view states. So if you need to create a view state with a point cloud cropped in a particular way, you will need to create a new point cloud part, crop it appropriately, and then manipulate that part with the view state functionality. Using this method, you could also have a couple of point cloud parts showing the different crop states for the areas that you're working on. However, I don't advise this as it is very resource intensive for your computer and could slow things to an unmanageable pace. You will have to experiment with this with your own computer though to know for sure. Once the point cloud is inserted into your part and you have that part mated into the assembly, you need what I refer to as a driving sketch to locate your other parts and assemblies relative to the point cloud. So the next step is to create a part and mate it into the assembly. You could do this several ways, but I find the most foolproof and issue free way is the tried and true, create a new part, save it as, and then use three flush mates or three mates in the main assembly. When working with the point clouds, I prefer to mate this driving sketch to the point cloud part file planes so that there is less of a chance that any misalignment can accidentally be introduced between the driving sketch and the point cloud. But mating to the assembly planes produces the same result. Just be careful not to alter the mates of either the point cloud part or the driving sketch part. When you have the driving sketch part in the assembly and mated, Double click on it to edit it from the assembly. This will allow you to use the point cloud as a reference for the following steps. The first thing I normally do is create a plane on a level that makes sense to have the sketch on that you will use to constrain the rest of your parts and assemblies to. This is typically a concrete or platform level in the case of a plant model or the ground level in almost all other cases. So from here, create a plane off the origin plane and drag it to the right level by aligning the point cloud so that you are looking at the plane of points perpendicular to your screen. It may help to isolate the plane you want to see by cropping your point cloud. Once you have the plane on the correct level, you can simply click on your view cube to view the top of the plane and start a sketch on that plane. The first two lines will be a horizontal and a vertical line, starting at the origin point and ending roughly where you want to align your model to. This might be at the start of the wall or a column center. In this case, we'll be using the wall as it's a bit easier to see, but the process is the same for column centers. From here, you will need a third line that aligns with either your wall or column centers. You can do this roughly by eye and then add dimensions to lock in and refine the location of your start point. Once you are happy with your starting point is aligned, you can drag the third line to get it aligned properly and then lock it in place with other dimensions. You will also need to add a fourth line that is perpendicular to your third line for the next step.
This line can be any length, but you should add a dimension to fully constrain your sketch. This might seem a little rough and inaccurate at first, but my experience is that this is accurate to within a few millimetres, which is more than good enough for nearly all jobs. In fact, every job I have ever done with point clouds has been far more accurate and has, less, has had less issues during the install phase than anything I have worked on previous to having the scanner. However, the beauty of working this way is that if you do find issues later down the track with the alignment of your model to the point cloud, the whole model can easily be altered by simply changing just a couple of dimensions in your driving sketch. Once you are happy that the initial lines are correct, you can start to build out the grid sketch or other important locations from this base driving sketch. But you only really need these four lines to progress almost any job from here. The next step is to create two planes, one on the end point of your third line and perpendicular to it, and one on the end of your fourth line and perpendicular to it. If we set these planes to auto resize and hide our point cloud, you might notice that this now resembles our origin planes and this is really what we want. We now have a set of planes to use as an origin that is aligned to and correctly located in our point cloud. So using this method, it means that it doesn't matter if your point cloud has been aligned to the site grid or otherwise geo-referenced using surveying methods, this will work 100% of the time for every case I've ever come across. Once you have these planes, you can create an assembly to model all of your other parts and assemblies in and mate it to these planes that you have just created. In this assembly, you are able to model as you normally would, that is to say, align to the origin axes and planes with local origin points for these models, and you can include your offsets in this assembly, which makes modeling and drawings easier and doesn't require any changes to the way you would normally work. If you start modeling things in and check them against your point cloud and notice that there is a misalignment, you can make adjustments to the driving sketch in the top assembly, or you can make adjustments in the main model assembly, whichever you think best suits your specific situation. What you will notice working this way though, is just how far out of whack so many things are in our built environment. It might look straight, parallel or perpendicular by eye, but the point clouds highlight just how untrue that is of our real world. This isn't an issue though, as working this way will give you the chance to do your models in a way that is the most accurate for your specific job. The last point cloud features you will need to know about are the cloud point and the cloud plane functions shown here. These basically do exactly what they say on the box. One creates a point on top of a point that you select in the point cloud. The other creates a plane using the average of the points that you are hovering over. These functions are handy and will allow you to rapidly model features crea created directly from the point cloud. However, they should be used with cautions. In earlier iterations of these functions, they created the work features, but they didn't stay constrained to the points that they were used to create them meaning that they would easily move out of alignment with the point cloud. This could be done simply by selecting them and dragging them, or when model, the model changed and updated or was rebuilt. This could be a huge move out into the never-never somewhere, or it could be a move of just a few millimetres. If it was the latter and it wasn't noticed, this could be enough to completely ruin a whole job. As a result of this and a few other factors, we don't advise using these functions past aligning your view cube as mentioned at the start of the tutorial. In fairness to Autodesk though, it appears that they have fixed this issue at some point, as I couldn't recreate this for this tutorial, but we suffer from the once bitten twice shy phobia here and avoid them at all costs. If you want to use them, go right ahead, just make sure you keep an eye on anything that you have created from these features for accuracy. This brings us to the end of this tutorial, and I hope it has helped some of you out. If you would like to see part two of this tutorial, please hit the subscribe button to get an email notification when it's posted. And don't forget to hit the like button to let me know that it's helped you. If you have any questions, please feel free to post in the comments below and I will get to them as fast as I can. Otherwise, if you think we can help with your scanning or inventor needs, please feel free to get in touch.
Thanks for watching and catch you next time.